The untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, I was just going back and I was rewatching a fight that I've never watched, or not re not rewatching, but watching a fight that I never watched because there, because every now and then I'll be on box right? I'll, I'll, I'll be studying guys' careers, and there might be a name or two that catches my eyes on the resume. And there might be a fight I've never seen it there. So I go back and I watch these fights and I'll learn more about boxing. So that, that, that's what I did today. Um, I actually had a chance to rewatch um, a fight I was really interested in um, with Nonito, Nonito Donaire, you know, a, a personal favorite of mine, a, a fighter that I really rate highly and I truly think is one of the only like living legends of the sport. You know, I had a chance to watch his fight against another fighter who I have great respect for, but sometimes he just gets like lost uh, it, uh, he, he slips through the cracks he's not very promoted he don't got a big name but he knocked out some names we know and that's uh morty mitalani you know the former uh, world champion now morty mitalani for those of you who don't know before i get to the fight morty mitalani is a damn good fighter i mean a damn good fighter this is a guy in mitalani in his own right that's been um ibf uh flyweight champion this is a guy in mitalani who has been towards the top of this division for a long 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 time you know and he's knocked out not just beat he hasn't just beat some good names he's knocked out some big names a couple of guys he knocked out were like uh, Zelani Tete knocked him out when he was undefeated um, knocked out and still to this day is the only man to knock out John Rio Casimiro knocked him out in five rounds and knocked out Akira Yagashi the former lineal flyweight champion so not a bad fighter at all but Mutalani at this point in his career, he wasn't that guy yet. He was still a guy that was relatively inexperienced at the world level. This is a guy, Mutalani, who, when he fought Donaire, had not yet, at that particular point in his career, fought outside of South Africa. He was a domestic level South African fighter. He was a South African flyweight champion, but he hadn't yet really become that world level fighter yet. So this was a big test for him, and uh, he prepared for it. Um, as I come to learn watching the fight, apparently, but the line he sparred like 400 rounds in preparation for this fight and he was prepared um now donaire from the from the donaire side of things coming into this fight donaire was th this is donaire's second fight his second defense of his ibf flyweight title um and he was two fights removed from fighting vic darcini in the first time when he knocked him out and that was a signature win in the career of donaire when he knocked out darcini a lot of people talk about that fight when they talk about his career so this is a this is a prime donaire that morty mitalani was fighting and this is an experienced mitalani going up against a prime donaire and it was a really good fight you know in this fight you got to really get it you, you had a chance to, to catch a glimpse into the the skills and the speed and you and you kind of get reminded of why they call donaire the filipino flash you know he's older now so now when you watch him fight he don't have that speed he used to have but back then oh my god he was he was what his name said he was the filipino flash and this is a fight where early on, Mutalani was kind of tense and Donaire took advantage of that, putting together some great combinations and, and, and showed a great display of body punching and things like that. But somewhere around like the third or fourth round, Mutalani started to get comfortable and he must have touched Donaire with something in those first three rounds that made Donaire want to show a different look because we saw Donaire do something in this fight that we don't normally see him do, that he's not really known for, which is switching from orthodox stance to the southpaw stance. And you see him boxing as a southpaw. You see him trying to set up a big left hand. And um, Mutalani was growing, with, growing in confidence as his fight uh, progressed. You know, Mutalani's not a guy that's pretty. He's not Pernell Whitaker or James Tony or Caleb Plant or anything like that with the way he likes to roll his shots. He kind of has that, you know, Marlon Stalin or I would say more of a Glenn Johnson type of high guard. The Glenn Johnson type of high guard. He just comes forward very workmanlike. I would say he's like a, a, a harder punching Glenn Johnson. That's the way that, that that's what Morty with the line reminded me of this fight of a harder punching Glenn Johnson. If you for those of you that remember the Road Warrior, always had that high guard, always you know trying to work that jab and, and set up big punches, but didn't really have head movement and could be outboxed at times. Same thing with the line. With the line was really beginning to grow in confidence as this fight went on as he landed uh, some good right hands and 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 was able to land a couple grazing jabs but really the right hand was the punch that was key for him and then um donaire eventually hit him with a shot and i think it was in the sixth round yeah the sixth round that got mutalani uh cut and the fight eventually got stopped on cuts but if you actually look at the copy box numbers that they show i know you can't go by copy box but if you look at the copy box numbers 
but Delania actually had the same amount of punches landed as Donaire. He landed 63 punches. Donaire landed 63 punches. I believe Donaire landed on like 20%, but Delania landed on 23%. So you can't always use combat box to say who was winning or who wasn't winning a fight because fights are scored round by round. But he was very much in the fight, and I think he was growing with confidence. And just seeing how he performed in that fight against a prime Donaire. I mean, this is Donaire that was not too far removed from the Victor Chinian fight, the first fight, when he knocked him out in five rounds. And um, he was mandatory. He had just beaten a fighter named Hussein Hussein um, to become number one contender, to become, to become mandatory. And man, he was dangerous. And this fight, I believe, prepared Mutalani to become the fighter that he ultimately became in boxing, you know. Um, and they prepared him for the bigger fights later on down the road when he fought the likes of Zolani Tate. And um, another underrated one he had was uh, Hernan Marquez, another guy that was former world champion that also fought uh, Chocolatito Gonzalez. Knocked him out in eight rounds. So he hasn't, he didn't just beat these guys. Um, was it? Wait. Never mind. That, 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 that's the, that's the, that's Donaire's resume, right? That's that's Donaire's resume. My bad. He didn't fight Hernan Marquez. Donaire knocked out Marquez, not, um, not Mutalani. But, 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 but you get my point. Mutalani. Um, was prepared greatly later on in this career because of this fight. I mean, because of this fight. Wait, is this Morty's resume or is this? It's doing there. Okay. So like, yeah, he was prepared greatly for his fight for, for the rest of his career because of this fight. And I think without the, if he didn't have this fight, I don't think maybe he's not as good or as as, as sharp beating these guys like Tay Tay and Casemiro and and uh, Igashi. You know, he truly gets forgotten about when we talk about the really great flyweights, um, the guys that have been consistent for. The better part of a decade plus um you know he lost to sonny edwards later in his career but that's an older Mithilani. Uh, obviously he's still dangerous and he hadn't lost for what he lost in 2021 to edwards but he hadn't lost since since the donaire fight he was on a he hadn't lost for 13 years until he fought sonny edwards so that, if anything that's correct to sonny edwards beating Mithilani and finally knocking him off but man um I'd, I'd highly advise anybody to go watch this fight not just so you can learn about donaire and, and remember how great he was but also go go back and watch um, this fight so you can learn about Morty Mithilani and then go watch his fight to like Casemiro, Tay Tay and these guys so you can see just how underrated he was you know really good fight really really good fight a lot of things going on in this fight really interesting you know I think on the undercard of this fight if I remember correctly um, from what I was reading and from what they said on the thing uh, Victor Chini wanted to becoming world champion again he captured three of the belts uh, he fought Christian Mijares who was the favorite knocked him out and then uh, got three of the belts at, at flyweight. He got the WBC, WBO, and the WBA. Um, Donaire had the IBF, I believe. I could be wrong. But anyway, he won. He knocked out Mihadas, became world champion again. And a couple years down the line, Donaire fought Darchinian again, to which Donaire, I believe, knocked Darchinian out a second time. So very significant card, very significant fight on this card as well. Um, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., when he was a prospect, he had a rematch with Matt Vanda because he fought Matt Vanda. And Matt Vanda, um, a lot of people thought Matt Vanda beat Chavez Jr. And he got booed like crazy and he had to give him a rematch. So, yeah, that's my little review of the fight. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys.